Welcome to Real Estate in Real Time. I'm your host, Woody Zimmerman, here with Mark Skabowski of Remax, Remax Lakes, and welcome to the show. Here we are. Good morning. Good morning. And, you know, last week we were talking about, well, we're talking about the do's or the don'ts of buying a home. Yes. And we, but we only talked about the don'ts. And we spent a lot of time on don'ts. Yeah, there, there's, there's, <laughs> there's a lot of don'ts, and these don'ts are very, very important. It's important if your plan is to ultimately buy the house. Yeah, because Absolutely. we, and we want to get to the do's, but we should probably recap the don'ts. Yeah, so probably the biggest don't is don't make any changes to your credit history. Mm -hmm. Don't make any changes to your job. And don't drain your savings. Those are probably the big three, right? Yeah. Don't take money out and pay cash for something thinking, well, I didn't get any new credit, Mark, mm -hmm. but you took all your cash away. Yeah. You're going to need cash. Yeah, before before you buy the house, don't don't go out and buy new furniture for the house. I and, mean, wait until you get the house. And, and, you know, that's one of the big things. So 90 days, same as cash. That's credit. I, I, I have had that happen one time. Okay. Where somebody, you know, hey, we're, we're coming out of an apartment. We're buying a house. They went out, 90 days, same as cash. They bought all kinds of furniture. And I said, well, isn't that great? Yeah, you know, because they pull your credit just prior to yeah. closing, or they could. And that could really impact if you're close. Now, obviously, if you've got great credit, you've got great financial resources, do what you want to do. But still talk to your lender yeah. before you do it. But if you're if you're scraping by to get in and you know, you're tighter, you're closer on ability to finance, don't do the 90 day sales cash thing. So no new credit, you know, anything that's going to impact your, your debt ratios, all of those things, Make, keep your job. Don't quit your job. Yeah. No, and don't no. drain your cash. Those are probably the three biggest don't, don't, don'ts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those are big ones. So those are biggies. So do's. Do's. Do. Get a pre-approval before you go. We talked about that last yes, week. We did. I talk about it frankly every week. Get a pre-approval. Preferably with a local lender. Preferably yeah. with a local lender. You can get it from wherever. But these internet banks, you know, I have had them. And, and unfortunately, it's it's people who are probably on the lower end of prices, you know, harder to get credit. Mm -hmm. um, and they're, they're pre-approved. Yes, we go through. They pay for inspections. They pay for, you know, their appraisal, all this, that, and the other thing. Get to the end and they can't buy because, oh, I forgot to do X, Y, Z. Yeah. And, and it's frustrating because these folks, you know, had saved a couple of thousand dollars up thinking they were going to buy a house. And now they've spent a couple of thousand dollars that it's going to take them a while to recover that. And it's just gone. Mm -hmm. I hate to see people spend and lose money, you know. And if you if you don't ultimately buy the house, that's where you're at. When, when you've spent on inspections on a house, you don't buy. Yeah, you know, and, and I actually um, contacted... One of those online banks or oh whatever, and and I tell you what, and uh, then I got I don't know probably 30, 40 phone calls. I mean it was like nonstop yes. for like yes. two days. Yes, and I just stopped to answer. I, I didn't pick up the phone. I just right. and I would just delete, delete, delete because I was just inundated. And I and I understand you know they they say okay you can save money here, save money right. there, but. Um, I will always work with a local lender because a local lender, you know, has gotten to know me. Sure. They know my situation sure. and I can just pick up the phone. I could call them direct and you're always working with the same people. Well, and that's an important piece. And, you know, again, I think part of the reason why people don't want to put their information in on these web forms mm -hmm. is because of exactly what you just talked about. And I got to tell you, they think the same thing of us as agents. They log into our website you know, in order to get information, they think we're going to hound them to death. And there are those that do. I mean, do we follow up? Absolutely. That's our job, right? Sure. Yeah, right. We are following up. But there comes to be a point. In fact, I've got, we call it a drip campaign to where you start emails that go along. And, and at some point in mine, it just says, you know, it sounds like we're not a good fit. Thanks. Be, you know, let me be in touch or reach out to me if you need something in the future. Yeah. Um, and then turn it off. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, some of those loan folks are pretty aggressive, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and, and there are agents that are aggressive doing the same thing. All you got to do is say, Mark, stop. I'm good. Unsubscribe, you know, to emails. Yeah. I'm not a big phone call, hound you on the phone, because I don't want it happening to me. Mm -hmm. You know, when my phone rings, I don't want to wince and go, oh, God, it's them yeah. again. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, anyway, so do. Yeah. Do get pre-approved. Do get a lender before you yes, go. Yes, absolutely. Um, do you know? Keep your payments up. Keep payments on time. 
if you if you're currently renting, keep paying, right? Pay yeah. on time. Any of your payments, keep it current. Do plan in advance, you know, because that pre-planning is going to help you along the way by having your credit situation where your pre-approval is going to be that much easier to get. Yeah. And again, why are we saying get the pre-approval up front? Because maybe there's issues that you don't even know about. Mm -hmm. You know, because again, we hear regularly, I pay $1,000 a month rent, I should be able to afford a $1,000 a month house payment. Yeah. Wrong. Yeah, it doesn't work that The way. lenders don't look at it that way. Yeah. They don't, you know. It, it, explain it, hard to explain, but in that case, it's rent. And, you know, there's recourse to the landlord. They're not out this significant dollar amount that they've loaned you yeah. if you don't make those payments. Right. Where you rent, what's the worst case? And then, again, I'm not making light of it, but the landlord could say you need to move out. They mm -hmm. could evict you. Mm -hmm. Where if you have got a loan and you don't pay on that loan, there's a foreclosure process. It's just a big deal for the banks yeah, to have to, to banks, recover. Banks don't want to take ownership of the house. I mean, they don't yeah. want to recover that. Yeah. Absolutely not. No, no. So. So do get do pre-plan and get your credit in order, get that pre-approval. Yeah, yeah, okay. No, that makes perfect sense. All right, we're going to talk more about the do's. Come up here next. You're listening to Real Estate in Real Time. Welcome back. Woody Zimmerman here with Mark Skabowski, and we're talking about the do's of buying a home, and we, we definitely want to get pre-approved, Yeah. and you definitely want to get your credit in order, yep. so you know what ballpark you're playing in. You know I mean, what ballpark you're playing in, and then, you know, stay in touch with your lender. When we talked about the don'ts, we mentioned a lot of things not to do. Yeah. Stay in touch with your lender, and I guess, bottom line, get them information that they've asked for quickly. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, once you have an accepted offer, the lender is going to ask you for a lot more stuff mm -hmm. um, because they need it in order to underwrite the loan to get you to closing. Yeah. So, you know, when typically closing is about 30 days from acceptance to loan close. So there's a lot that's happening in that time frame. Mm -hmm. And the lender needs the information in order to underwrite the file. Yeah. They need the appraisal completed. They need all of your documentation so they can underwrite the file. Mm -hmm. Well, if you don't get them the information, and you wait five days, what do we say? 30 days to closing? Yeah. One sixth of the time you just burned up yeah. by not providing the lender with the information they need. Right, that's gonna slow everything. It's gonna slow everything down. So the lenders aren't asking for it just because. Yeah. They're asking for that information because they need it mm -hmm. in order to process your loan. So you can be your own worst enemy by not providing that. Yeah. And again, that's part of the reason why planning and getting in touch with someone early, they can tell you what you need so you can have time to gather that, right? It doesn't mean you have to have this big file, although organization would be nice <laughs> yeah. to have it, you know, ready to go, but have that information, get it to the lender as quickly as you can. Mm -hmm. um, along with that, the lender's going to talk to you, and these are other dues, do explore, you know, there's nothing wrong with talking to a couple of different lenders. You know, it's not just about rate. Uh, yeah, I tell folks, hey, because there are laws for us as agents, we can't just send everybody to the same person. We're not supposed to. Okay. It's RESPA law. Um, and what that says is we really have to give people options. Otherwise, it could be like we're funneling people to specifically a lender. We're getting kickbacks and all that stuff. It can't happen. Yeah. It shouldn't happen. It's illegal if it does. Yeah. So we have to give three people okay. three options. Okay. It's pretty simple. Call lender A, B, or the place that you bank. As an agent, it's simple for me to comply with RESPA when it comes to that. Mm -hmm. So as you as a borrower, many times all people call and ask is the rate. Well, they don't ask about fees. They don't ask about service. You know, And, and to me, a little higher rate for somebody who's responsive and it answers their phone, gets back to me, respects mm -hmm. my time, mm -hmm. and I can respect their time. I would rather work with that person than the person who doesn't answer me at all. Again, mm -hmm. just like getting them the information very quickly. If you have to wait two or three days for getting an answer back for a lender or something, there's something wrong with that picture, in my opinion. Sure. Right? I mean, professionally, whether I'm in real estate or not, right, call back. Yeah. Somebody leaves you a voicemail, call back. It doesn't have to be in 20 minutes, even though we're instant you know, yeah, oh, gratification yeah. that's society yeah, today, right. yeah. but at least call back. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, that's what I tell folks, because I'll get the, you know, hey, 
I uh, left you a message and you didn't call me back. Well, really, I keep my voicemail, and mm -hmm. I and I keep, so I'd like to you know explain to me where that's at. I apologize. Yeah. Maybe you left it in the wrong number. And I heard Chris <laughs> Lake yesterday. Yeah. I heard him talking about uh, on the morning there was a lady inviting friends for dinner, and it was coming to Chris's number. <laughs> So, and, and nice. he actually, he called the lady and told her, you know, okay. I guess it was an elderly lady. It was pretty funny. It was uh, pretty funny, but yeah. he did that this week. I heard that, you know, because uh, I do listen to 107.3 in the morning. Hey, thank you. <laughs> so, so I heard that and I thought, you know what? It, how do you know if you don't call somebody back? And that's right. what I told people. If I don't call you back, there's a reason. Back. There's yeah. a reason that yeah. I didn't call you back because I will. Within a day, I'll be back in touch with you. Yeah. I will. Yeah. Email, same thing. So if you haven't got a response... Same thing with a lender. When you're picking a lender, if they're not responsive up front, are they going to be responsive when you need them? Right, right. Right? Oh, yeah. So um, so that's a do. Mm -hmm. Do be professional when you're dealing with these folks. Do be respectful of their time. Getting a text at 11 o'clock at night, hey, mm -hmm. can you give me a shout? Probably not going to happen. <laughs> right. Probably not going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, so do find an agent to work with. Do work with an agent. Yeah. You know, and yes, it's self-serving. Yes, I'm an agent. I'm not saying do work with Mark, although it'd be great if you want to. Sure. But pick an agent and work with one agent. You would be surprised the number of people that call around different agents. If you do that, you don't have anybody really working for you. They're answering their phone. They're answering your question. But are they looking out for your best interest? Are they mm -hmm. really trying to help you find something? You know, even a blind squirrel... We'll find a nut occasionally yeah. to where, you know, you'll reach out to somebody and it's the perfect situation and go. But you're better off developing a relationship with an agent. Let them know what you want. It doesn't have to be a secret, you know, what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. Develop that relationship with the agent. And as things, especially in the market, the way it's going today, as things are potentially coming on, things they may have some insight into, this may be coming on the market, you could get a little bit of a leg up on others that are just, you know, hitting the Zillow, contact an agent. Yeah. Um, and Zillow, with contact an agent, you're going to a different agent every time. You're not going to the same agent each time you call. Yeah. Um, so pick an agent and work with an agent. And if you don't want to work with that agent anymore, tell them, I don't want to work with you anymore. Yeah. You know, it, it's professional. It's the way that you should handle this. This is a business transaction. Mm -hmm. You know, when it's all over and, and folks in my office say, you know, Mark, this is crazy. You know, I, I become friends with my clients and I'm like, you know what? It's a business relationship. I'm friendly. I'm professional. But we're not going to go on vacation together. Yeah. Right. After you bought your house. Right. You probably won't want to with me. <laughs> right? but, but all I'm saying is it's a business relationship. So yeah. let's be professional as we go along. Yeah. In the transaction. So no. do pick an agent. Yeah, That's do pick an year. agent. Yes, absolutely. All right. Uh, well, that wraps up our time here today. We do need your contact information. Sure. Websites, lakes-realtors.com. Phone numbers, 574-834-1233. can always email me at markskabowski at remax.net. All right. Very good. Good information here today the dues of buying a, a property, a home. You've been listening to Real Estate in Real Time. Have yourself a wonderful weekend.